Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's presentation, Open Roads Designer Best Practices Project Management. Now, project management can, of course, mean a lot of things, but for the purpose of this presentation, for us, it means managing your project data so that Open Roads Designer can operate in the most effective and efficient manner possible. Now, best practices always, of course, are just suggestions and good rules of thumb to go by. They're not necessarily requirements. Um, the fact is, when it comes to transportation projects, many times there is no one-size-fits-all. Processes uh, can vary by, based on organization, based on the type of project. You may think, you know, if you've got a resurfacing project versus a an interchange project versus an urban boulevard, those different types of project may call uh, for different methodologies and even different disciplines. Um, a roadway designer may do things a little bit different, say, than a, a drainage designer or a traffic designer. So again, there's really no one size fits all, uh, but these are just going to be some good suggestions and good rules of thumb to go by. Now, because we kind of want to look at our project data, our agenda really is going to focus on three things. And the first one is seed files, uh, which we'll cover fairly quickly. Then we're going to spend some time on data segregation, and then we're going to spend the majority of our time on reference files and their correct use within Open Roads um, Designer. So let's begin with seed files. Now there are really three best practices that we want to to point out with regards to seed files uh, when working on a project. And the first one is is absolutely critical, and that is to make sure that your seed files are clean. In other words, we don't want any leftover civil data uh, from previous versions, and really no microstation holdovers. You know, we don't really want old line styles or old fonts or things like that. You want a clean uh, seed file because of obviously if it's dirty in any way or if it's got uh, any kind of old stuff that just gets carried through so so the first thing when beginning a project with open roads designers let's make sure that we've got uh, clean seed files secondly uh, obviously and this is pretty obvious nowadays you want to go ahead and uh, assign a coordinate system for the project um, in your seed files this is just going to allow you to easily consume uh, outside data, for example, if you want to go to USGS website and download DEM files. It also allows you to easily integrate with other software such as Google Earth. So again, it, it, this is something that nowadays is, is pretty done, pretty much done as a matter of course and is a good best practice. Finally, uh, I want to talk about 2D versus 3D. And we won't spend a lot of time on this, but the best practice is pretty straightforward. And that is use 3D uh, for survey and terrains and use 2D for everything else. I mean that's that's pretty much a good best practice in a nutshell. 3D for survey and terrains and then use 2D for everything else. Geometry, corridor, super elevation, whatever the case may be. Now those other those 2D files will will obviously create 3D models, open roads will and so just let ORD create and manage the 3D models and um, and that'll be the most efficient way uh, to handle your your project data. With that said, let's talk a little bit about data segregation. Now, data segregation or separation is really a, a must. Um, and what I mean by that is separate uh, different types of data into their own uh, models or even into their own DGN files. So the terrain should be in its own file, geometry in its own file, corridors, super, utilities, cross sections, drainage, geotech, uh, the, the list goes on and on. Separate that file out, segregate your data. And you may ask, well, well, why? Why is that a best practice? Well, there's several reasons. Number one, smaller files are just going to be inherently faster and, and more efficient. Uh, they're easier to manage, uh, easier to recall where things are. If somebody comes behind you, uh, you know, they they don't know, well, where's your super for that alignment? You know, where's your cross sections for that alignment? Is, are they in a different model? Are they in the same file? Uh, when, you, when you break them out, it's just easier to find things and manage things. And it also gives us a lot more control later 
when we come back and we want to compile those that data for different scenarios. Maybe, for example, you want to create an I model uh, to go out into the field. Um, when things are separated, it's much easier to compile what I need to publish for purpose. Or maybe you want to create a composite model for Luminar T and visualization. Um, again, you don't get a, you're not you know if everything's in one file, you're gonna get a lot of stuff you don't need. Whereas if it's se segregated out, it's much easier to uh, efficiently create what you need when you need it. Now, let me give you a few common mistakes that that we see. Uh, that kind of defeats the purpose here. One of those is creating linked objects in the corridor file. Let me, let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Let's say that as a user you want to create a proposed terrain from the finished grade mesh. This might be something you do. Uh, you want to send the terrain over to the, the hydrology group so they can do some drainage analysis. Now if you create that proposed terrain in the same file as the corridor then every time the corridor is processed, the terrain will be updated. So you're basically just you're creating a heaviness on your corridor. You're making it go update other things. Um, let's say an, another situation. Let's say you have civil sales for driveways, and you put them in your corridor file. Once again, every time you process the corridor, it has to go update your civil sales. Whereas if you take those objects, the finished grade terrain, the civil sales, you put them in their own files and reference the corridor, then when you're working in the corridor, it's not having to update all that. It's going to be more efficient. It's going to be faster. Now, once you go into those files, they'll recognize the corridor has been modified and they'll update themselves. But it's just a, a common mistake that people make. Another one is to create extraneous data in the corridor file. You're putting your super data in there, your cross sections in there. Uh, again, there's no reason to to do that. You know, if it's a very small project, you know, I, I get it. But Open Rose Designer is designed to work with reference files. Take advantage of them. Uh, segregate that data. Separate it out. It's just going to be a f much more efficient and faster in uh, the long run. Now, the question is always going to come up in individual areas about, well, should I segregate even more? For example, let's say we have a uh, an interchange job, kind of like you see um, on the screen there with multiple alignments. Do I put all of them in one file or do I maybe segregate them out into individual files, ramp A.dgn, ramp B.dgn? Uh, again, that, that may be um, a case-by-case -case basis on the project. For example, it, it may be warranted if you're going to have a, a multiple team members that all want to work on different alignments at the same time. Um, that may be a case where you want to break it out. Uh, one of the nice things about that is if you're in project-wise, that actually allows you to check out alignments because you're checking out the individual files. And of course, even if you do that, you can always use a blank master file uh, to get all the geometry or a container file to get all the geometry at, at once. And we'll show that here in just a, a, a little bit. Um, what about corridors? Do you break them up? or not. Well, a good rule of thumb is, yeah, you, you, you do. Um, I think a lot of people come at it from the opposite direction. They say, well, do I, is there a good reason to break them up? Um, I would even say, why not come at it uh, from 180 degrees? Is there a good reason not to? Because the fact is, there's, there's just so many good reasons to do it. Now, it's not because of any size or memory restrictions. An open roads designer, it's 64-bit. It's going to take care. It's going to take advantage of all your memory. Uh, it's uh, it's multiprocessor enabled, so it's going to take care of all your processors. So this is not because of size or memory, but again, there may be good reasons to do it. With just as with geometry, maybe you want multiple team members to be able to work on uh, different sections of the project at the same time. The smaller sections are just, again, even in 64-bit, they're going to be faster and easier to work with. Um, and again, you can still reference together when you need the whole thing. See, that's the beauty of Open Rose Designer is its use of reference files. Take advantage of them. Don't be afraid to break something up because you can still pull them all back together and reference them together when you want to utilize the project as a, as a whole. Now, if you're going to break up corridors, you may ask the question, well, 
is there anything that should dictate where to break it? Well, again, this is going to be on a project by project basis. For example, it may be based on engineering configurations. For example, in an interchange, maybe you want the ramp A corridor to be in its own file, the ramp B corridor in its own file. It might be based on the size or scale of the project. You may have a 10 mile job, you may want to break it into two five mile pieces or five two mile pieces. Um, it may be based on structures. You may, you know, have part of, you know, you may want to break it up into the section before the bridge and the section after the bridge or some geographical entity, you know, in between major intersections. Again, this is really on a project by project basis, but, but take advantage of, of reference files. In the long run, again, your project is going to be faster and much more efficient. Now, let me say this. Whatever you do, this is the real best practice, which is to make sure that your team sits down up front and decides, makes a decision together how to do it, right? Do we need to break up the alignments? If we do, this is how we're going to do it. In other words, make sure everybody's aware of what the plan is, and then everyone is on the same page. As I said, that's the real best practice here. Now, with the last part of this presentation, I want to spend the majority of the time on reference files and, and in particular we're going to look at different uh, different things about reference files and how they impact our our project and the first thing we want to look at is live nesting now for those of us that have worked in microstation or, or any of our legacy products uh, for a while we, we're very familiar with reference files and we understand that uh, a, ref a file can have any number of reference attachments. Those attachments can have their own attachments, which in turn can have even more attachments, and it just goes on and on. And so what live nesting does, it says, hey, when I reference in a file, I want you to automatically grab all of that file's children, okay, and, and reference them in as well. Now, to what depth these children are located depends on the nesting depth value that you use and I believe that can be anywhere from 0 to 99. Now you may say well what's the advantage uh, of live nesting? Well it's just a faster and efficient method of attaching and displaying multiple files. In other words you can attach one file, a single parent, and get all of that, that file's children by using live nesting. So let's take a look uh, at, at an example of this. So here we are in our little interchange project that we mentioned a little bit earlier and let's say that on this project we've decided for whatever reason to break these up into individual pieces so every uh, alignment is in its own file so what I've done here is I'm in a file called allalignments.dgn this is a container file uh, this file is actually blank um, and it's referenced in each individual alignment file so you can see if I turn the display off uh, they go off. If I turn them on, they go on. So there's actually nothing in this file. It's just referenced. Now let's go over uh, to a blank file. I've got one here called test.dgn. And let's say that I want to bring in all of the alignments. Now I don't want to have to go bring them in individually. Okay, because that's just, you know, I mean, I don't want to do that all the time. That wouldn't be very efficient. Well, that's the reason I created that container file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the file called All Alignments, okay? And notice I'm going to, I've got Live Nesting set, and I'm going to set to a depth of 1. So a depth of 0 would have only given me the All Alignments file. A depth of 1 says bring all of its children uh, with it. So now... You can see here by referencing in the parent and using live nesting, I automatically got all the children of all alignments. And so it's just a very fast, very efficient way to get multiple reference files with a, with a single um, attachment. That's the big advantage of, of live nesting. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.